Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Kiefer, and I am a GI health psychologist and professor of medicine and psychiatry at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and I'll be talking today on behavioral treatments for GI disorders. So today I'm going to answer three questions. One, why do we use behavioral therapies in the management of GI conditions? Two, what are some of the brain gut psychotherapies that may help me? And three, how do I go about finding somebody in my community if I'm interested in it? So first, why do we use behavioral therapies in the management of GI conditions, right? These are medical disorders, they're not psychological conditions. So why would we recommend a behavior therapy? First, we know that GI conditions, especially because they are unpredictable and uncomfortable and stigmatizing, really affect patients' well-being and many patients need support. Secondly, GI disorders are some of the most stress-sensitive disorders. Even people who do not have GI conditions experience symptoms under stress. And third, the gut-brain axis is really responsive to the brain-based interventions as much as it is to the gut-based ones. So GI disorders clearly affect more than our guts. Many patients um, report a wide range of emotional and physical symptoms associated with their condition, including things like pain and shame and stigma and sadness, loneliness, isolation, loss of potential, fear of symptoms, fatigue, um, medical trauma, sadness, worry. All of those things are part of that experience of having a chronic GI condition. Secondly, GI conditions are stress sensitive disorders, and we know that stress affects the gut brain axis, um, as well as the gut brain microbiome axis, um, which can in turn affect concentration and emotions. Secondly, early life stressors that patients have can sometimes affect, even at, as children, the um, development of their gut's nervous system and how their body reacts to stress in adulthood. So some people might be predisposed to being stress sensitive in their GI tract. Furthermore, what we do when we are stressed may also make our symptoms worse. People might eat more than the usual or less than usual. They might increase their alcohol intake, worsening their heartburn and reflux. They may get less sleep, less exercise, or eat things that bother them. Um, stress may also increase the amount of air that we swallow, causing gas and bloating during the day. It can increase um, muscle spasms in the intestine. And then finally, I would just say that gastrointestinal symptoms themselves are stressful and sometimes breed themselves. One thing that I often recommend um, to my patients and many of my gastroenterologist colleagues do as well right in their visit is to teach diaphragmatic breathing. More than 50% of US adults actually have chest breathing. And even though our um, lung capacity in our lower lungs is where most of our air can be um, harnessed, we often don't breathe with that belly that we um, could be doing better. So um, because our disorders of gut-brain interaction are so influenced by the sympathetic nervous system, deep breathing allows us to sort of activate the opposite, the antidote, the parasympathetic nervous system. We know that GI um, conditions are often um, particularly beneficial um, in diaphragmatic breathing. It increases time in that rest and digest mode. And so many patients who practice this breathing can feel that their GI tracts are more efficient. We know that it can also improve gastric accommodation after meals. So if you have dyspepsia or gastroparesis, it may be helpful to breathe for a few minutes after, um, or during or after a meal. We also know that um, diaphragmatic breathing can improve the pressure gradient at lower at the lower esophageal sphincter. So if you have reflux or if you have rumination syndrome, um, there are definitely techniques that you can use with your diaphragmatic breathing to help that. We also know that diaphragmatic breathing decreases bowel urgency and cramping, fear of incontinence or vomiting, and even when you're sitting on the toilet and anticipating discomfort um, from having a bowel movement, breathing can really kind of offset that process. So I'm a big fan of breathing, and many of your GI doctors have also been um, trained in how to teach you to do that, so be sure to ask. Now, um, brain gut psychotherapies are a little bit different than what you might see in regular therapy in the community, and I wanted to spend most of my time talking about that. So brain gut psychotherapies are targeted behavioral interventions that have been adapted or personalized to really reflect 
their impact on the underlying drivers of your GI symptoms, so brain gut dysregulation basically. And there's growing evidence from neuroscience and brain imaging research that these therapies do indeed target the very specific either cognitive or emotional or behavioral factors that are associated with the way the brain and the gut communicate in that bidirectional way, including things like an overactive nervous system or fear conditioning or pain catastrophizing or hypervigilance or overattention. So when I talk to my patients about brain gut psychotherapy, um, I often describe what they're experiencing as a software problem, not a hardware problem. So the problem that uh, causes many symptoms is that your brain is overworking. It's like having an app or a um, series of apps that are tracking your background location. They are constantly refreshing and they're draining your battery because they're kind of on in a setting that is um, inefficient. So when the brain is um, overworking, as in the GI, in GI conditions, it's often paying unnecessary attention to what's going on in the GI tract. Um, and so that's one way in which um, brain gut psychotherapies might be able to help. And I'll explain that in a minute. And then the second um, example is that, you know, alerts from your gut to your brain are supposed to be informative. They're supposed to tell you when you're hungry, when you're full, when you need to have a bowel movement, when you're stressed. But instead, many of the times, the alerts can actually be uninformative. They can be false signals, false alarms. So that would be the example of you picking up every single spam or robocall that you know comes into your phone instead of just answering from known callers. So I like to think about behavior therapies as sort of decreasing the number of apps tracking your location um, so that your brain is not working so hard on your in letting your gut sort of do the heavier lifting. And secondly, reduce your spam and unknown callers by teaching you skills so that there are less um, concerns about knowing the difference between a real threat and a false alarm. I'm going to talk about a couple, um, the two primary um, therapies for um, brain gut. One is gut-directed hypnotherapy, which, um, for those of you who don't know, is a, a medical therapy, a medical hypnosis, in which you are placed into a very relaxed and focused state using physical relaxation and guided imagery. And once you're in that state, so if you think of that, that initial relaxation state as an IV needle going into your arm, what you're, um, the really therapeutic piece is the dose that is put into that needle, right? It is the idea or the suggestions that are specific to your GI tract that are going to be the most effective um, ingredient of the intervention. And many of these therapies are offered over seven to 12 sessions. There are some really straightforward protocols that can be provided by a hypnotherapist um, over three to four months. And there's home practice in between visits so that they can really kind of help you cope throughout the um, week and not just um, during your, your scheduled sessions. CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, is the other one um, that I highly recommend with the most data in um, GI conditions. It is a theoretical orientation that sort of understands that the brain and the gut become um, intertwined in unhelpful ways, often um, conditioned responses from having experienced symptoms and patients end up developing behaviors and coping strategies that may have been helpful at the beginning of their disease, but no longer are. And so the GI CBT therapist can really help patients retrain the way that they think and respond and feel to their symptoms in a very collaborative, personalized way um, that can influence the way um, gut sensations are even experienced in the brain. So here's an example. Let's say that a patient is um, on their way to go on a road trip with their friends and they have the th following thoughts. I'm worried that I'm gonna have to stop to use the bathroom and inconvenience my friends. I'm gonna be embarrassed if I have to ask the Uber driver to pull over or if there's no place to pull off and I have to go to the bathroom, I might have a bowel accident. Now this patient um, is not wrong necessarily that these things could happen, but the making some uh, huge assumptions that might not be helpful. They're assuming that it's definitely going to happen. They're assuming it's going to be catastrophic and embarrassing that they have no control over it and they wouldn't be able to handle it. And so CBT might pose some different questions. What is the realistic likelihood that you're going to have to emergently stop along the way? What is the realistic likelihood that your friends would be upset that you're going to have a bowel accident and even if you did, you wouldn't be able to hand it? And then the other side of that would 
if it happened, let's assume it did, what would it, would it be as bad as I think? Would your friends like you for who you are? Would you judge another person if something terrible like that happened? Um, how much do you really have control over your bowel movements? And finally, is it really um, worth getting yourself worked up about increasing the likelihood that you actually do have a problem? So lastly, just to wrap up, I wanted to talk a little bit about accessing this GI behavioral care for any of those reasons, whether you're having trouble coping and have intense feelings about your symptoms and struggles, whether you are in looking for stress management strategies because stress is very sensitive of your disorder, or whether you really are interested in a more comprehensive brain gut psychotherapy approach. The key um, to uh, brain gut psychotherapy is that it works best when we, the therapists, are in contact with your gastroenterologist. And so it's really important that you have a doctor that you trust who can um, talk to you about your brain gut dysregulation and the factors that are really driving your particular symptoms so that when you go to the therapist, to the behavioral um, person in your community, you're able to explain to them why you're looking for cognitive behavior therapy or gut directed hypnotherapy or you know what have you um, and that your GI doctor can communicate with them if they have any questions around your physical condition and this is really really important the other challenge is obviously in identifying those suitable providers and so here is a list of some places you might be able to find therapists in your community and you can often filter by insurance and gender and, and, and those in location um, but I wanted to point out that you know it's not necessary to ne to find somebody that has GI specific experience instead you may want to just look for people who have language in their profiles about working with patients with chronic illness or chronic pain um, Usually those patient, those um, providers have specific training in behavioral medicine, health psych, medical social work. Then you also can look for therapists who say that they do cognitive behavior therapy or solution focused therapy or gut directed hypnotherapy. Um, and then if you find a therapist that you do like, who's like, what is IBS? What is GERD? What is um, gastroparesis? Um, you can always refer that therapist to our Rome gastro psych group for training and consultation. So just to um, remind everyone of the key goals today is that GI conditions really affect well-being and behavior therapies may help with coping and social support. They may also um, uh, bring gut psychotherapies are very personalized and target brain gut dysregulation and GI symptoms. And um, finally, I didn't get a chance to talk about this, but in the future, um, there are a lot of other positive psychology interventions that may also be useful in promoting well-being with a chronic GI condition. Thank you.